Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to my lecture. So today we will talk about chapter 5 currency derivatives market. Anak-anak semua saya harapkan you all semua sihat-sihatlah menjalani kehidupan. So let's continue with our chapter 5 currency derivative market. Oh before we start as like, like always, there will be a series of videos so that it will be more effective, uh, effective and efficient for all of us to study. So, video saya akan ada beberapa series lah for every single particular chapter. For this one, pun silap-silap kita akan ada four videos. So, bear with me. Okay, first and foremost... Let's define what is derivative. Okay. Derivative okay, is a financial security. It is also uh, a financial securities. You have learned about financial securities. Uh, you have learned a few types of financial securities before. You have learned about stock. You have learned about a bond or fixed income security. You also learned about, maybe some of you have learned about warrant, unit trust. Okay, those are a few examples of financial securities and a, a derivative also is one of them. So, again, a derivative is a financial securities with a value that is reliant upon or derived from. So, derivative comes from the word derived. Maksudnya, it must be derived from something. So, derived daripada apa? A derivative is a financial, security, financial securities that is derived from an underlying asset or group of asset. Okay, as a benchmark or as its origin. Dia mesti ada mark dia, dia mesti ada asal dia datang mana. There will be no derivative yang tiba-tiba dah ada without having dia punya uh, underlying asset. Without having uh, his mother. Ha, macam itulah lebih kurang maksud dia. Dia mesti datang daripada satu aset khusus. Okay? Alright. So, the derivative itself alright, can also be defined as a contract between two or more parties. And the derivative derives its price from fluctuation in the underlying asset. Ha, this is something special about derivative. Derivative is actually a financial security. Yang cantiknya, yang specialnya, even though it is a financial security, it is a financial security that also represent a contract between two or more parties. Their financial securities dalam bentuk contract or agreement. Uh, canggih lah tu sebab apa? It is a financial, financial security, it is a contract and you can trade this contract to make money. You can use this financial security to make money, to make some profit for you. Ha, macam mana pula dengan harga derivative ni? So, since derivative ni derive daripada one's underlying asset, maka price dia pun bergantung kepada the price of the underlying asset. They will have no, they will have positive relationship. Contoh, kalau underlying asset ni price dia increase, the price of derivative yang terhasil from this underlying asset also will increase. Also, that is the introduction uh, introduction introduction part of derivative lah. Sorry ya, tersasul banyak malam ni. Okay, so the most common uh, underlying asset for derivatives are stocks, bonds, commodities, currency, interest rate and market indices. Ini adalah golongan mak-mak ni. Okay, these assets are commonly purchased through brokerage firms. Okay, alright, kita tengok apa yang ada next. Okay, so these are the summary of the uh, origin ataupun the underlying asset of derivative. We have stock, bond, commodities, currency, interest rate and market indices. See, interest rate also can derive uh, futures contract ataupun derivative con contract. Alright. Next example of derivative instruments are as follow. Okay, these are the underlying asset. Okay, asset asal. If you still can remember of, or if you do not know, we have two type of asset. Eh? Kita ada business asset and another one kita ada financial asset. So, underlying asset can be uh, business asset ataupun financial asset. For example, crude palm oil. Crude palm oil ni adalah business asset lah ataupun commodity. Business asset ni asset yang physically can be seen. Ada features. Alright. Uh, crude palm oil, minyak sawit mentah. 
Ha, so dia ada rupa paras dia. Rupa paras dia apa? Greasy-greasy. Dia gelap-gelap. Okay. Ha, itu adalah minyak sawit mentah. Crude palm oil. And this crude palm oil can derive crude palm oil futures. Ataupun FCPO. Okay. And then kita ada financial asset yang lain. Kita ada KLCI ataupun index. This KLCI adalah financial asset. But it can derive futures contract yang kita panggil KLCI index futures or FKLI. Okay. And then we have 5 years MGS or bond. Bond ni pula boleh menghasilkan what type of derivative. Dia boleh menghasilkan MGS futures or FMG. Ada FMG3, ada FMG5, ada FMG for 10 years. 3, 5, 10 tu represent dia punya maturity period lah. Okay. And then kita ada interest rate. Interest rate for borrowing and lending uh, in the interbank money market. The, we call it CLIBOR or CLIBOR rate. Kuala Lumpur interbank offered rate. And this rate also can derive uh, derivative contract yang kita panggil CLIBOR futures. FKB3. And then, okay, since this is FIM542, our focus will be on currency. So, nampak tak kat sini kita ada exchange rate or quotes for AUD USD for example of course kita akan ada yang lain lah GBP USD, Yen USD ok for example here we have AUD USD currency alright this exchange rate also can derive derivative ha, apa derivative yang dia boleh hasilkan dia boleh hasilkan uh, AUD USD forward contract or AUD USD futures contract or AUD USD option contract. So these codes can derive a few types of derivative contract. Okay, let's move to the types of derivative. Okay, tadi example now types of derivative we have forward, futures, we have options, and finally we have swaps. But we will cover only three types of derivative. The first one is forward. This one you have learned in chapter 4. Then we have futures contract. Ini forward contract. Ini futures contract. And last one we have options contract. Kita, we, we will not learn swaps. Okay? Only these three. Okay, by definition, kita boleh define basically all these three type of uh, derivative contract ni forward futures and option kita boleh simply define as a contract or agreement to buy or to sell specified underlying asset at specified future date sama nampak sama tapi there is further explanation that will differentiate between these three the first one apa dia alright Forward. Forward is a contract or agreement to buy or to sell specified underlying asset at specified future date and at a predetermined price agreed by the buyer and seller ha, pada harga yang telah ditetapkan which can be negotiated between both of them. Ha, this one kita dah belajar in chapter 4. Client and bank boleh negotiate berapa banyak uh, jumlah uh, agreement tu janji nak beli currency tu berapa juta ke nak jual currency berapa juta ke you can negotiate negotiate between uh, both of you seller and buyer client and the bank and then uh, tarikh dia pun boleh negotiate ok kalau futures pula also same definition pada mula-mulanya but ok at the settlement price ok maksudnya the contract tu akan settle pada settlement price at the maturity Okay, the specification of the contract pula have been standardized. Okay, uh, tak boleh suka-suka hati nak uh, come out dengan contract untuk beli atau jual currency untuk uh, setengah juta, suku juta. Tak boleh. Kenapa? Jumlah tu pun sendiri actually has been standardized and both party, maksudnya buyer and seller have to fulfill the agreement. Nah, kalau dah janji nak beli, kena beli. Pihak yang janji nak jual, kena ju jual. And the last one, we have option. Okay. Option pula sama uh, definasi kat depan and at the predetermined exercise price. Okay, so the exercise price uh, either negotiated pun boleh, standardized pun boleh sebab we have two type of option over the counter and also uh, exchange traded option. This That one saya akan uh, explain detail nanti eh. Okay, however, apa cerita lebih uh, tentang option ni? The specification of the contract can be standardized or negotiated between buyer and seller. Uh, buyer, the buyer of the option has the right either to use or not the option. Okay, 
Ha, dia boleh untuk pilih tiba-tiba tak jadi beli currency tu sebab tak menguntungkan dia. So, he can choose not to use or not to exercise the option. But seller, alright, the person who sell the option to the buyer, ada right, sorry, sorry, ada obligation to fulfill the agreement if the option is exercised by the buyer. Uh, I will explain this in detail when we do uh, option contract. Okay? Alright. So, let's meet in video number 2. Bye for now.